I love going for long road trips. Through the mountains, out to the coast, cross country. I am not afraid to get in the car and just keep driving. And I love doing it with somebody else beside me in the passenger seat. You know why? Because I'm horrible with maps. Trying to track down where I am and how to get from point A to point B is tricky. And I know sometimes we can feel that way as we learn, as students, as we encounter a new technology. We look at a, a diagram in front of us and we're just trying to make heads or tails out of it. And so in this nugget, I want to just take a moment and help decipher uh, some of those devices and technologies and virtualization that we're going to see so we can feel comfortable looking at these diagrams and maps and know what they're trying to tell us in the world of virtualization. Now, when I talk about these uh, virtualization diagrams to decipher, maybe you haven't encountered them before. Let's just uh, let's just take a look on a web browser here, and let's do an image search for a virtualization diagram and see what we find. Ooh, I like that one. Let's just go ahead and take a little deeper dive into this picture. I know it seems strange, but let's start right here in the middle. When we look at a diagram like this and we see something that actually looks like a computer, chances are in the world of virtualization, we're going to be talking about a host, the platform where we actually have a physical box that has CPU and RAM and network cards. And most importantly, we're going to install a hypervisor which is the operating system that partitions out the CPU, RAM, and network availability to the virtual machines. And in fact, VMware is the brand that it happens to be in use in this particular diagram. We've got their icon referenced right there, and we see a reference specifically to ESX, and ESX and ESXi are the hypervisor host operating systems that provide virtualization in the world of VMware. Above that, we see this reference to virtual machines, and often you'll see it listed out just like this because the main idea of virtualization is that this is a virtual version of this. Through software, we're able to create an abstraction, something that an operating system could pretend was hardware and install itself onto it. And then we could install applications that run on top of that operating system. And so side by side on the same hardware running simultaneously, we might have different operating systems. We could have Linux and Unix and Mac OS X, and we could have Microsoft operating systems 2016, 2012, 2019, whatever we need, all running side by side by side using their portion of the available resources on that host. And this diagram also makes a reference to the fact that the virtual machine itself is really a bunch of files. And files have to be saved to a drive. Instead of being saved to a local drive, it's illustrating the fact that those files can be saved to a storage area network device. In other words, over the network, all of the hosts have the ability to save files to this centralized storage area network accessible device. And therefore, the files that make up the virtual machine are stored remotely. And the key benefit of that is that if for some reason this host goes down, this virtual machine could be loaded on another host because it also has access to where those files are stored. Let's switch over to another diagram and, and let's see what we can figure out here. Now, in this case, we see big and bold up at the top, we're talking about a Hyper-V host. So this is actually a Microsoft brand form of virtualization rather than VMware's. But the key word here is host. So I'll be honest, I'm not a huge fan of this diagram because we see what look like a bunch of physical boxes and we have to make sense of the fact that these are all virtual machines. So really everything in the top half of this diagram is a box. It is the Hyper-V host. And then within that box, we see these partition sections. We have network applications running on virtual machines and each one of those virtual machines is being assigned a virtual NIC. And in the brain of the Hyper-V host, we have something called the Hyper-V extensible switch, which has an uplink port to the physical NIC. And notice this boundary layer here. So now we're leaving the virtual world and entering the physical world. And the physical world connects to a physical switch, which then can connect to the rest of the data center out here. So I kind of love the fact that this actually goes a little bit against what I said earlier, because conventions are not always the same, especially when you move from one vendor to another. You can't always assume that you're looking at the same thing every time. This diagram happens to be all about the network and how virtual machines need to have a virtual network that then needs to have a link into the physical network in order to go back and forth. On the other hand, the previous diagram that we looked at was focusing on storage. And so that was its emphasis is where are we putting our files in a storage area network? So, so things we see in common and that you can expect to see in virtualization all the time is where's the host and where's the virtual machine? Focus on that framework first. And then based upon the context, what else are we talking about? Are we talking about managing virtual machines or managing hosts or where content is stored or how do we network? Or maybe it'll be a diagram that's talking about redundancy, how one host can support another. Whatever the context is, our job is to be methodical, not panic, 
and just work through things one step at a time. And when you're not sure what something is, don't be afraid to look it up. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.